Now, if we lose our king, Maui, game over. No more game, because he got the magic, so we have to protect him. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for what to watch if you liked the Queen's Gambit. I'm coming for you! I'm coming for you! Why do you smile? Nay, why do you? I suppose I smile for pleasure. In chess, the small one can become the big one. That's why I like it. For this list, we'll be looking at series and films that you should check out if you're a fan of The Queen's Gambit. Do you have any other recommendations? Let us know. Number 10, The Great. The Empress and I will have tea. In the receiving room. In 2018, screenwriter Tony McNamara made waves with The Favourite, a period black comedy that earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Screenplay. In May of 2020, Hulu released his new show The Great, another period comedy, this one about Russia's Catherine the Great. Elle Fanning plays Catherine, with Nicholas Holt portraying her husband Peter III. How do you know? From my husband. Like The Queen's Gambit, The Great follows an outsider who rises to incredible power and high status, and Fanning proves just as captivating an actress as Anya Taylor-Joy. Of course, it bears almost no resemblance to actual history, with Hulu even calling it anti-historical. But it's fun, funny, and visually striking. You didn't poison him, did you? No. I knew you hadn't. You have a good heart. <laughs> How terrible I asked you that. Slap me if you like, I deserve it. Number nine, Magnus. I was uh, starting to compare him with uh, some of the internationally known players, and well, how good were they when they were that, that age? He was starting to measure up. The Queen's Gambit was widely praised for its depiction of chess and the professional chess community. And while knowledge of the game certainly isn't necessary to enjoy the show, it may have turned a few people onto the popular game. If that's the case, then Magnus is required viewing. The game is easy to learn, but it's impossible for a human to master completely. Magnus is essentially the Queen's Gambit in real life, as the documentary concerns chess prodigy Magnus Carlsen. Becoming a grandmaster at 13, Carlsen is one of the best players that the game has ever seen. Oh, that was quick. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> he set various records, including a peak classical rating of 2882 and the longest unbeaten run in chess history. He was also the youngest person to reach number one in the FIDE World Rankings. I always enjoyed watching his games because it makes me feel proud about the game of chess. Number eight, Searching for Bobby Fischer. One of the greatest chess movies ever made, Searching for Bobby Fischer is based on the life of another chess prodigy named Joshua Waitzkin. Hi. The movie is based on the book of the same name, which was written by Waitzkin's father, Fred. I'm looking for a teacher for my son. I don't teach anymore. Waitzkin won two U.S. Junior Chess Championships in the early 90s and became an international master at 16. Like Harry Beltic in The Queen's Gambit, he eventually lost his love for chess and retired around 1999. Funnily enough, Waitzkin was taught by Bruce Pandolfini, who later served as a chess consultant on The Queen's Gambit. And like The Queen's Gambit, Searching for Bobby Fischer received praise for both its chess scenes and moving story. Look deep, Josh, it's there. It's 12 moves away, but it's there. You've got him. Number seven, The Imitation Game. Disappointing. Pardon? I, I had hoped for a bit more. Sergeant Stahl, is it just me, or do you get the sense that we're being insulted? While it has nothing to do with chess, the imitation game still shares a few similarities with The Queen's Gambit. At the heart of the story is Alan Turing, a mathematician and cryptanalyst who played a major role in World War II by breaking secret German codes for the British government. Turing is quite an awkward, cold, and seemingly indifferent individual who struggles to socialize with others. This aspect of the film actually received some criticism, as the real Turing did not display these antisocial traits. Well, I believe you just set the record for the shortest job interview in British military history. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mother says I could be off-putting sometimes oh, on account of being one of the best mathematicians in the world. In the world. The movie is also a period piece, taking place throughout World War II and into the 50s, which is when The Queen's Gambit begins. I mean, I trade Brooks all the time, but it's not... <laughs> I bet you do. Number six, The Dark Horse. And that board there, the kingdom for this king, that board is like our land. We have to protect our land, eh? 
Hailed as one of the greatest New Zealand films ever made, The Dark Horse is another chess movie concerning a historical figure. This one follows Genesis Potany, a New Zealand man of Maori descent who unfortunately passed away in 2011 at the age of 47. Potany suffered from bipolar disorder, for which he was hospitalized on several occasions. In 2000, he co-founded a chess club for underprivileged children called the Eastern Knights. You can't put him there unless it's protected. Now, now we've gone over this. Like Benny Watts in The Queen's Gambit, he became an exceptional speed chess player in the process. Number 5. The Crown This is a monarchy. And if you got it, flaunt it, I say. When it comes to Netflix period dramas, it's hard to beat The Crown. Perhaps one of their most popular series, The Crown covers the history of the modern royal family. The first two seasons span the late 40s to mid-60s and star Claire Foy as Queen Elizabeth II. Olivia Colman takes over for the third and fourth seasons, presenting an older and more experienced queen from the 60s to 1990. The queen has carried on performing her duties seemingly unperturbed, despite the unprecedented and severe level of threat that the intruder posed. The fourth season is notable for introducing Princess Diana and her sons to the cast. However, it also drew ire from various critics and the royal family due to notable departures from historical accuracy. Not the mother of your children. Don't bring the boys into this. All right. Not the woman you marry! I refuse to be blamed any longer for this grotesque misalliance! Number 4. Pawn Sacrifice American Bobby Fischer returned to international competition by defeating the number 5 player in the world, Victor Korchkoi and declared his intention to become world champion. Our previous entry, Searching for Bobby Fischer, uses Fischer's name as a metaphor while following another child prodigy. Pawn Sacrifice follows the man himself. In this film, Tobey Maguire plays Fischer, an American chess player who at 15 years old became the youngest grandmaster in history at the time. In 1972, Fischer played what was dubbed the match of the century, defeating Boris Spassky at the World Chess Championship. No. The movie shares a lot in common with The Queen's Gambit, including a chess prodigy, their rise through the chess world, a heated final game against a Soviet chess master, and a Cold War era period setting. While the movie failed at the box office, Maguire's performance as Fisher earned widespread praise. Grandmasters never applaud an opponent's victory, but I guess this is something no one has ever seen before. Number 3. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel At 13, I announced I was going to Bryn Mawr College. In Catherine Hepburn's old room. From day one, I knew that decision was a charmed one. Serving as one of Prime Video's finest creations, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is indeed a marvelous, if somewhat underappreciated, comedy drama. The series follows a prodigy of sorts, but not of the chess variety. Rather, it concerns Midge Maisel, a 50s housewife who discovers a natural inclination and talent for stand-up comedy. But the key is, the complaint should never be about big important things, only little things like, it's hot out, this restaurant is so far, the line is so long, you know, things nobody can do anything about. The series shares a time period with The Queen's Gambit, and similarly follows a female character confidently making her way through a male-dominated profession. Now I promised him I wouldn't talk about him, but that just shows he can't read a bluff. So, if you see him at a poker table after the show, go all in. The production values are terrific and convincing, as is Rachel Brosnahan's Emmy and Golden Globe winning performance as Maisel. Charming, funny, sad, and with a razor-sharp eye for social commentary, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is an undeniable winner. Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Do you love it? Number 2. Emma You see, he wished exceedingly to come, but his aunt and uncle could not spare him. Well, I dare say he might have come if he could. I do not know why you should say so. Those looking for another Anya Taylor-Joy period piece should definitely check out Emma. Taylor Joy is quite proficient in period films and TV shows, as proven in The Miniaturist and The Witch. Emma serves as an adaptation of Jane Austen's classic novel, published way back in 1815. Taylor Joy plays the titular Emma Woodhouse, whom Austen famously called, quote, a heroine whom no one but myself will much like. Why do you smile? Nay, why do you? I suppose I smile for pleasure. Like her or not, Taylor Joy does a typically excellent job in the role, and the cast is rounded out by the likes of Johnny Flynn, Mia Goth, Miranda Hart, and Bill Nye. 
It's required viewing for Anya Taylor-Joy fans, Austin readers, and period piece aficionados alike. God knows I have been a very indifferent lover, but you understand me. You, you understand my feelings. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Godless. This western was also created by Scott Frank and shares some of the same actors. And who might you be? Name's Webster. I'm with the Pinkerton Detective Agency in Chicago. Husband, how are you? Mr. Bischoff's very concerned about his wife. Mrs. America. This period drama concerns the passing of the Equal Rights Amendment. Point is, if everything must be equal, then the logical extension of the ERA is that we would have a gender neutral society. You have scared the women of America into believing something that is not based in reality. Rights. But when you argue an actual point in the real world in a court of law, you need to cite a case to support your arguments, so cite the case. Puzzle. Kelly McDonald plays a stay at home mom who takes to solving jigsaw puzzles. But when you complete a puzzle, when you finish it, you know that you have made all the right choices. Fresh, a 12-year-old drug courier during New York's crack epidemic discovers chess. You're hoarding. You're playing each piece like losing it hurts. This ain't checkers. Game over. Kasparov and the Machine. This documentary follows the famous chess match between Getty Kasparov and IBM's computer Deep Blue. I think Gary has now established beyond any doubt uh, he's the strongest player in history. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Queen of Katwe In chess, the small one can become the big one. That's why I like it. This Disney film is just as uplifting as its real-life story. It follows a Ugandan chess player named Fiona Mutesi, who started playing chess in a Ugandan slum named Katwe. Mutesi was forced to drop out of school at nine and began selling maize on the street, but she eventually discovered chess and her calling. Checkmate. Mutesi rose through the ranks, became a woman candidate master, and represented her native Uganda in four different chess Olympiads. Playing Mutesi is another native of Katwe, Madina Naranga, who delivers a confident performance alongside the always excellent David Oyelowo and Lupita Nyong'o. It is a game of kings and queens. It teaches discipline and mental strength. Work also teaches these things. It's a beautiful film adapted from an inspiring story. Fiona Mutesi and Christine Namaganda are tied for first position in the women's category. They will now play the final deciding game. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.